Hello and uh, welcome everyone. This is the big cultural conundrum. Can Hindutva nationalism coexist with a sense of regional sub-nationalism? Are these two ideas at odds with each other? Or can sub-regional nationalism exist one under the overall rubric and umbrella of uh, Hindutva? Joining us to talk about this are two intellectual heavyweights. It gives me a uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, first and foremost uh, the member of parliament uh, in the Trinamool Congress, Professor Shukata Roy, joining us, uh, local boy and uh, considered a formidable thinker in local circles and squaring off against him and speaking for the first time in a public uh, platform since he was appointed as a senior advisor in the Union Ministry of Information Broadcasting, a man who the current government relies on for thoughts on uh, strategy, media, uh, shaping narratives, uh, author, thinker, Kanchan Gupta. Thank you very much, Kanchanda, for joining us here at the India Today East Conclave. I want to start by asking Kanchanda about why you think that the idea of Hindutva nationalism is so broad and encompassing that there is space for regionalism under the rubric of uh, Hindutva. For example, in Bengal, the idea of Bengali pride often, as we saw during the elections, is at contrast with the idea of a Hindutva India. Why do you think these two ideas are not at odds with each other? Yeah, thank you, uh, Rahul, for uh, giving me this opportunity to be here. Let me begin by pointing out that it's very apt we should be discussing this uh, question sitting in Calcutta, sitting in Bengal. The first uh, treatise on Hindutva uh, was penned in Bengal. And uh, that was Chandrakant Basu, he, he actually crystallized the idea of Hindutva, what it means, what it stands for, etc. And then subsequently we had other stalwarts like Rajnarayan Basu. Navagopal Mitro, he started something called the Hindu Mela. Uh, so Bengal has had a history of contributing to the idea of Hindutva. And uh, that idea was essentially what was subsequently accepted even by the Supreme Court in 1995-96, that Hindutva really stands for a cultural, civilizational identity. And if you must add, or if you must tag the word nationalism to it, it becomes cultural nationalism. And West Bengal is, um, has, has historically been a classic example of, class, uh, of uh, cultural nationalism. It's another matter that uh, times changed, uh, the left front rule did enormous damage to that uh, identity of Bengal. Subsequently what happened I shall not comment on, uh, but to suggest that it is at war with uh, sub-nationalism or regional, we just heard the chief minister of West Bengal reject the idea of regionalism reject the idea of uh, uh, subculturalism. She, she was here sitting right, I think, where I am sitting right now. Uh, and to say that they contradict each other, I do not accept that at all. Shukatada, why is it that you think, sitting in Kolkata, that the idea of regional pride is at contrast with a larger idea of Hindutva? Kanchanda says, the forces of Hindutva found a lot of ideological moorings, a lot of the thinking, the writing happened in Bengal and it's only after independence during the leftist rule that Kolkata moved away and during this election and even otherwise, the BJP and the forces of Hindutva are trying to bring Bengal back where it earlier stood. I will start by reminding Rahul that uh, the Hindu Tovalas have never done well in electoral terms in Bengal. Shama Prashad Mukherjee, who later became the founder of Jansang, 
lost an election in 1946. Only time he won an election in his life was in 1952. Why is that? Why have Bengalis not accepted Hindutva? Because during the freedom movement and before that, a Bengali cultural ethos developed, starting from Ram Mohan and Vidya Shagun, and the whole idea was secular. And the main person, of course, was Rabindranath Tagore, the biggest exponent of Indian wholeness. Then we had the anti-Bengal partition movement in 1905, and it was led by Rabindranath Tagore. If you really read the translations of Tagore's poems written during this period, it's called Shadesh. You'll see that he conceived of Bengal as a separate whole and in an idea which was totally secular. You know the national anthem of Bangladesh, Amar Shonar Bangla Amitomai Bhalobashi, was composed by Tagore at this time. So, in the uh, growth of Bengali national, uh, Indian nationalism in Bengal, there is no place for Hindutva at all. The persons Mr. Gupta mentioned are forgotten at desert, dead as dodo. What has survived is the cultural ethos propounded by Tagore, later by Kaji Nozrul Islam. And that's why. Hindutva has never found roots in Bengal, nor will it ever find roots in Bengal. But Rahul, I'll say, say that wherever there is a regional cultural movement, Hindutva will not make any impact. For instance, take Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu had a great Congress movement, Rajagopalachari and Kamraj. But its actual movement was the anti-Hindi movement which was again a subnational movement. That's why BJP or Hindutva has never found any ground. So you've got two Hindu. very powerful attacks. One, you've brought it down to elections and validation. There's a political idea. Shogodada says, whenever this has been tested in the recent assembly elections was the most glaring example where the forces of Hindutva were up against the forces of regional pride. Regional pride rooted in language triumphed over a larger idea of Hindutva. Let's start by attacking that. Uh, Rahul, uh, I, I am not comfortable talking politics. He is a politician. He is welcome to reduce everything to the level of elections, who won elections and who lost elections. I don't look at it that way. Uh, I don't think... Uh, Indian civilization is about politicians and their politics. So I won't, I won't rise to his bait. Uh, just because one election happened a certain way in West Bengal, I can cite ten other uh, elections which happened another way, including in Assam, in Tripura, uh, most recently in Manipur, uh, so we can go on, but that's, a, that's, a, that's not really what we are here for today. He mentioned uh, three things I will, I will bring in. He talked about Tagore and his uh, Shadesh uh, period. That is 1905 when Bengal was divided. Now, Shadesh has both Tagore's adulation of Bengal, which... An example is the national anthem of Bangladesh, Amar Shonar Bangla. It also has adulation of Desh, which is the nation. And uh, one can again give various, Uamar Desher Mati. He is not talking about Uamar Banglar Mati, he is talking about Desher Mati. And 1905 is also when the time is also the time when the first uh, concept of Bharat Mata, Mother India, emerges, and it is Avanindranath Tagore who draws the first uh, pictorial representation of Bharat Mata. It comes from Bengal, 
It does not come from the Hindi heartland. Again, I mean, I could, I, I could give you, he mentions Tamil Nadu. I have, I have uh, 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 copies of a magazine printed in uh, Tamil, in Tamil, uh, what was, now, what is now Tamil Nadu, called Vande Mataram. The, uh, we, we, we have all listened to Subalakshmi. One of her best renditions is Vande Mataram. I love the intensity of this argument. Near very good counter uh -huh. to the point that Shugatada made about so to say language that and region. Respond to Kanchanda's argument about what happened in Manipur, Tripura, Assam. Your argument was rooted in language, that the forces of language would not allow for the imposition of the idea of Hindutva. He says, look at Assam, look at Manipur, look at Tripura. Hindutva existing under the rubric of a regional pride, on the ground. It didn't happen you know, in Bengal. <coughs> One election is not a civilizational not, idea. Rahul, I'm not talking about elections at all. All I'm talking about is that uh, Mr. Gupta mistook a point that our cultural subnationalism is not antithetical to the broader national idea. After all, the nationalist thought in colonial times came from Bengal. Bankim, Rishi Bankim as we call him, first gave the idea of Bande Mataram. But it wasn't all Bengal cultural thought. It did not exclude the Muslims. Problem with Hindutva is that it excludes the Muslims. Bengal has 25% uh, Muslims as in West Bengal today. And please remember what happened in East Pakistan. They thought that they could create a nation on the basis of Islam. Ultimately, it was seen that Religion is not enough to sustain a nation. That's why they broke up, not only on the issue of language, but on the issue of a larger... Kanchanda, Bengali sub-nationalism sub -national. no, no, no. is not at odds with the idea of Hindutva. A lot of the ideas of Indian nationalism came from within Bengali sub-nationalism. Rahul, the problem is that uh, we have not made an effort to figure out what, what is Hindutva all about? So we go by popular slogans, we go by what uh, uh, people like Mr. Roy like to propagate, that it is all Hindi, it's all exclusionary, it's all about domination. No. Again, I mean, I am not here talking as a politician. The idea of Hindutva, and I would urge everybody to read the Supreme Court just judgment of 1995 because that encapsulates all the arguments which were made till then. Hindutva as a, as a civilizational concept. When I say cultural nationalism, a, a, a Westphalian state cannot have cultural nationalism. A Westphalian state does not have a civilizational history. And that is where we depart from European nationalism. European nationalism was about, it was centered around the concept of a Westphalian state. First the state was created, then people were created, then the idea of nationhood was created, and then nationalism was propagated. Here it's different. We come from a civilization that embraces, that includes. This is not a civilization that was... Uh, that was created in the last century or a couple of centuries no, but ago. But Shugutada would contest that by, he made the point about exclusion. It's not about what you think no, 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 is it included. Is not, it's about whether those no, who might feel excluded no, are feeling included or not. Rahul, cultural nationalism, and I am very clear, cultural nationalism, call it Hindutva, call it whatever you wish to, is by Indian nationalism, is by definition inclusive because we are a civilizational nation. Our nationalism is civilizational. It does not exclude. It is politics which excludes, and he is answerable for that. I am not. Shukotada, it may be politics which is exclusionary in its execution. The civilizational idea is an inclusionary idea. 
the civilization civilizational idea is not an inclusive one. why not the concept propagated by the few hindu to ideologues starting from savarkar with golwalkar basically they want a hindu rashtra hindu rashtra concept is basically an exclusionary concept we do not believe in that we believe in constitutional india where everybody has got a equal right i would like to refer you to jawaharlal nehru's discovery of india where he has described how indian civilization has progressed and that is in contrast to what the hindu rashtra wallas or the hindu to wallas they propagate now you may say that we, who has won in assam assam this is the fallout of the assam students movement when they wanted all muslims to be driven out of assam but you know all these people of whom assam bjp is composed of they are formerly in congress or in the assu student movement bjp has no basic growth there himanto bishwa sharma the chief minister who may speak here tomorrow was a total congressman so the question is even in assam hindutva has not caught on as a so philosophy. kanchan that didn't want to get drawn into politics so i'll ask the cultural point about the likes of savarkar and golwalkar in their thoughts in their writings stood and wrote about an idea which put hindutva and hinduism and hindus at the core of the idea of india now it may be uncomfortable therefore the modern day rss says those ideas don't reflect the modern rss his argument is but that is at the root of the hindutva way of thinking savarkar looked at hindutva from a particular perspective uh others have looked at it from a different perspective the works which i have cited look at hindutva from the civilizational perspective uh, professor roy thinks of india as a constitutional nation or a constitutional state you cannot really have a constitutional nation but uh, i i look at india as a civilizational nation uh, i don't wish to really stress on this point that neither he nor i are indigenous to this country his family came in slightly more happier times my family came in the middle of a blood bath but why did we come to this country his family was better off than my family they could have gone to europe and settled there why did they choose to settle over here why did my family come to choose, uh, why did they choose to settle over here why did they seek refuge over here so india is apart from being a civilizational state it is also a natural home for hindus they have no other home now to say that no this is not a home for hindus but for everybody else as he and many others often suggest that is not true that is just not true now before and i think we are running out of time i will just quickly make two points rahul you know when i i mentioned rajnor uh, rajnor and uh, boshu i mean he is very dismissively he said they are dead as dodo and that again is reflective of the decline and fall of bengal since the late 1960s that some of the finest minds finest scholars which bengal has produced today they are dismissed as dead as dodo and uh, he he very clearly said that the idea of hindutva is that i mean you know humanity is one 
he it's not about distinguishing between individuals but looking at it as in in the larger context of a civilization and a last point and then it's all over to mr roy please go and read the full text all five stanzas of what was the morning song of india and later became janagana mana the national anthem the first stanza is the national anthem there are four more stanzas to what tagore wrote and if you read those four stanzas you will get an idea of what hindutva he didn't write it in the context of hindutva but i interpret it as a fine definition of the idea of hindutva what it means what it stands for and wh where it beckons us to and that's why I come back to where i started i am glad we are having this debate in bengal that this is the land which actually was the fountain head of the idea of hindutva cultural nationalism civilizational identity and that is the biggest gift from bengal and bengal's thinkers to the nation called india so you brought the argument in the direction of the debate over the citizenship amendment act saying that if there is a hindu who is persecuted india is his natural sanctuary if there are people from other religions who are persecuted they may find relief and succor elsewhere uh, kanchanda and many in the ruling dispensation say which is why we need an act like the citizenship amendment act because hindus can have nowhere else to go how do you respond you know I, basically the hindutva mindset was described once by narendra modi in parliament he said that we are under 1000 years of slavery so i stood up and said how i thought we were under 200 years of british domination he said nahi jab se mogal pathan aaya tab se hi hum slave the i don't believe this i feel that india has a composite culture not a hindu culture i believe that hindu rashtra is not a rashtra accepted by the people i do not believe in modi's idea that we are subjugated for 1000 years i will this i will just recite from tagore's famous poem called bharat tirth the pilgrimage of india there he said esho hai arjo esho is easy to understand even for those who don't know bengali esho hai arjo esho hai onarjo hindu musliman esho esho aaj tumi ingraj এসো এসো খ্রিশ্চান এসো ব্রাহ্মণ সূচি করি মন ধরো হাত সবাকার এসো হে পতিত হ অপনীত সব অপমান ভার মা রবিষেকে এসো এসো তরা মঙ্গল ঘট হয় নিজে ভরা সবার পরশে পবিত্র করার তীর্থ নিরে এই ভারতের মহামানবের সাগর তীরে দিস ইজ হোয়াট ইন্ডিয়া ইজ ইটস এ পিলগ্রিমেজ প্লেস হোয়ার পিপল কেম ফ্রম অল ওভার and became the melting pot where civilization coalesced to try to have a hindu rashtra which is undivided india up to afghanistan is to dilute this basic concept of nationalism bengal has accepted tagore's concept of nationalism and it will never accept savarkar or golwalkar's concept of nationalism kanchanda we we also will also go by what nazrul islam said aki brinte duti kusum hindu musliman muslim ta nayan muni hindu tahar pran you see the problem Hindus with politics the problem persons. with politics rahul nazrul that... islam was no politician no 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 the... bengali poet no no but uh. appropriation of nazrul islam is political no, you I have don't. you have no love for nazrul well, islam You, it is just love. a political We appropriation no, and and that is why i said a politician's perspective is not my perspective it will never meet uh see this whole thing of uh, hindutvas will never meet with secularists we so, remain totally secular as promised by the constitution of india 
Okay, and good. that is the concept of so India. So that is why that, that is why in you India. repeatedly distill everything down to Hindus and Muslims. I, I did not even the, mention the word Muslim even once. It was no no. No, no, no. I, I'm not part of polit. Of, I'm not a politician. No, but I, I, Muslims are part of us. No, no. I, I don't. Don't believe. I, I, I will. I refuse to look at it in a uh, 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 in a binary manner. It is not a binary form. No, add Christians and Sikhs. Uh, no, no. And so that's Sikhs why I said, please read the remaining stanzas of Tagore's Jonagono uh, Mono, and 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 you will get the point which I am making. Okay. Now, just a very quick point over here. This whole attempt to distillate everything in communal terms is not a game which I play. I distillate everything in civilizational terms. And again, I repeat that Indian civilization is an inclusive, it has been an inclusive civilization. A civilizational nation like India is by definition inclusive. A civilizational idea of nationalism is of course inclusive. Okay. And that is why we are so different from European nationalism which uh, I think Professor Roy is more influenced by. You know, the last 30 minutes have been a trip down various aspects of our culture, our history, our tradition, our concepts of nationalism and civilization. And if you want to have a rarefied intellectual argument, I think Kolkata is the best place to have it. So for uh, lighting up, it. yes? Dada? Have it by all means, again. Oh, absolutely. So for lighting up uh, the session on cultural nationalism and regional pride with the depth of your arguments, Kanchan Gupta and Shogotaroy, thank you so much. That was thank a fantastic you, argument. Thank, thank you. you.